Hello, hello, hello. Here is your third installment of the Chinese dynasties. <clears throat> Let's talk about the Qin dynasty. So, as per usual, the Qin dynasty is in China. Yes, and notice it's getting larger. You should also notice that now the dynasty has expanded to encompass the Yellow River and the Changjiang River. Okay, how long do they rule? Well, coincidentally, we are now studying the shortest ruling dynasty in all the in uh, all of the ancient China. This lasted only 15 years. Okay, and here is the guy in charge for most of those years. He is known as Emperor Qin Shi Huangdi. Let's talk more about this guy, the emperor. Okay, he was a big fan of legalism. Okay, and he also said that uh, he wanted his family line to rule for 10,000 generations. Okay, that's a pretty long time if you're doing the math. Okay, the emperor did a lot of things. He had many achievements for the people of China. One achievement was standardization, and that simply means to make the same. Okay, so let's take a look at this map. You have all these states prior to the emperor ruling China. And all these states might have had different forms of money. And what the emperor did was he took away all that money and made one money. He standardized the money. One money to use all throughout China. And he did this with all sorts of things. Okay, laws and punishments he standardized. Uh, pretty strict punishments, I might add. Uh, he did this with measurements and writing. And, and basically... Standardization made traveling around the dynasty a little bit easier. You know, if everyone's using the same money, it's easier to trade with each other. Okay, the emperor was a big fan of protection. Okay, it was on his to-do list. So he built a wall along China's northern border. Now, this isn't the wall that you travel to today. What he did was he connected the smaller walls of the previous kingdoms. You know, he basically wanted to protect China from any invaders. Okay, uh, now this wall took 10 years and 300,000 men to complete. Okay, I'm sure there were some deaths along the way. Okay, now um, the Emperor Qin uh, had uh, some people that didn't like him. Okay, not everyone was a fan of his policies. Okay, you can't win them all. Confucian scholars were were basically the people that hated him the most, okay, and the feeling was mutual. And these two groups of people, you know, the Confucian scholars and a legalist empire, emperor, uh, did not get along throughout his reign. And what the emperor did was he ordered all Confucian books to be burned and even killed many of the Confucian scholars. And much like every dynasty, um, this one came to an end too. And <clears throat> just 9,985 years short of uh, his prediction. Some say the emperor died while looking for a magic potion um, so that he could live forever. Some say he was poisoned soon after his death. Okay, he was buried with, with the, his terracotta warriors. They would protect him in his afterlife. Okay, his son would take over after his death, but um, there are... Um, some some historians that say he was convinced to kill himself because of the bad job he was doing. Okay, soon after his death, his nephew, the uh, Qin Er Shi's nephew, took over and ruled the throne for 46 days. But soon enough, um, peasants revolted, and the Han Dynasty would eventually rule all of China. Okay, so that was a uh, Qin Dynasty in uh, four and a half minutes. Here are some sources. Thanks for listening.